Hey, welcome back. Today we'll be using OpenAI to design a ring and then we're going to make it in real life. So for this project, we're using OpenAI. Now, as an artist, I definitely have some mixed thoughts on all these new fangled AI engines, but in general, I like to embrace change and innovation. So I'm actually quite curious to try this out and see how it goes. Also, feel free to leave some of your own thoughts about AI in the comments. I know a lot of you viewers are also artists and I'd love to hear some of your personal perspective on the subject. Anyways, let's get to it. Our methods in this video are fairly straightforward. I wanna keep things somewhat simple for our first attempt at this. So as you you can see here you just type a description of what you want images of and then the AI will serve you a few different options and right away we've got a lot of interesting results but you'll notice they're kind of all a little bit weird the design the proportions and really kind of everything about the rings are a bit wonky and unusual uh, but that's kind of what we're going for here. We can use that to our advantage. This is cool because kind of a side effect of this strange image generator is that we're left with some really interesting abstract designs that seem like they'd be more at home in a Pixar film rather than a real thing that you can actually wear. So this is cool. This gives us some unique designs to work with and it also leaves us with plenty of room for our own artistic interpretation. We spent a little while tweaking our input text and eventually we got a few different options for rings we liked, but this image right here we thought was perfect. It's not too crazy or over the top and I think it actually looks really nice. And also in order to make this, we're gonna have to think way outside of the box because this is not a design that's as straightforward to make as you might think. So it forces us to get creative. I really like that. So we spent a bit of time thinking about the design and made a couple of choices on what materials we wanna use. As you can see, we definitely switched things up a bit. Uh, we're ready to get started. We're gonna be using traditional yellow gold for the band itself. And then for the inlay, we'll be using a nice complementary shade of Bello Opal. First, we'll mount the gold blank onto a ring mandrel and using calipers, we'll scribe two lines. Those will serve as boundaries for our inlay cutout. Then with the scribe tool, we'll roughly lay out the taper that we're just gonna put on one end of the cutout. Next, with the center punch, we'll space out eight or so little divots. This will keep our drill bit from wandering in the next step. And in theory, this isn't 100% necessary, but again, because this is somewhat experimental and we haven't tried it before, we're being a little extra cautious in our curation process. It doesn't hurt when you're working with really expensive pieces of gold. Now mounted in the vise, we'll use this carbide bit to turn those little divots into even bigger divots. One by one, we just slowly rotate the ring and divot those out. And don't worry, these don't have to be perfect or aligned or anything like that. These are just rough little cutouts in order to help remove some of the material. All right, we've got the bigger divots. Now with the Fordham drill, we're gonna take those bigger divots and we're gonna turn them into really big divots. Just kidding, we're actually just gonna drill it all the way out here. Okay, we're getting there. It's looking a bit crusty, but that's all right. Rome wasn't built in a day. And if we're gonna try something new, we certainly may have to break a few omelets on the way. So with our jeweler saw, we'll clean things up a bit before we move on to some filing. Now towards the end here on the cutout shaping, these little conical carbide burrs were actually a lifesaver in this shaping process. They're super helpful in getting those small little details just right. Okay, let's sweep up these gold shavings and set them aside. One of these days we need to do a project using some of these precious metal shavings. Let me know if you've got any ideas you'd want me to try out. Okay, now back over to the lathe with the gold blank on the ring mandrel. It's time to do a bit of shaping and polishing to it. We're mostly looking to kind of break any of the sharp edges here, round stuff over, and just kind of smooth it out in general. There we go, it's actually starting to come together. Kind of reminds me of a fancy golden bottle opener ring, which is kind of cool, but definitely not as cool as we're about to make it. And to get there, we're gonna have to bust out the opal. So it's time to get started on that. This is where things are gonna start getting really challenging, mostly due to three things. Number one, the amount of precision required. Two, the difficulty in making such a strange shape out of a material like opal. And then three, the fact that opal can be fragile before it's mounted into the ring. 
So we're taking our time here. This is a tricky, tedious task. And those diamond hole saws you saw me using were actually really helpful for all of this. We sell these on our Patrick and Derp Supplies website and they're super handy for ring making. I actually worked directly with the manufacturer to get the custom diameters in tons of tiny little increments. And this gives us the ability to very precisely make ring blanks in just the right size, which will speed up your process immensely. And it also saves us a lot of money and wasted material that doesn't end up getting thrown out. Okay, here's our rough blank of opal. Now we need to cut out a section for use as the inlay itself. And this is a very tedious step in the creation process. A lot of little fine handwork here and a lot of the tools we have just honestly aren't set up perfectly for this. This is not something that we do every day. So just slowly but surely we just shave away material until we get the fit just right. You do not want to go too far because you can't add material back to the ring. So this was just a very slow, very tedious process. Now to mount the opal piece in the ring, we can't just glue the edges and expect it to hold itself in place. So we're gonna use a press fit method and add a gold liner to the ring. This gives us a backing to fix the opal piece too. And it does add extra thickness to the ring, so you gotta account for that, and we made sure to do that in the initial design process. All right, with the liner pressed into place, it's time to give this its final comfort finish. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Using the Dremel, we carve away the rough, harsh edges. We start rounding them out. And then using various different grits of sandpaper, we start at a really rough grit, and we work our way all the way up to a really fine, usually about a 2,000 grit for gold. And then from there, we use a little bit of standard green jeweler's rouge, and we give it a mirror polish. All right, this is looking cool. Even without the opal piece in place, this is a fun, unique looking ring. All right, back to the opal. As a nice little finishing touch, we're gonna add little facets to it. This will help it reflect light more effectively, and it gives it a more unique kind of chiseled look. But it definitely is tedious. All right, things are coming together. It's finally time to attach the two pieces. So I guess literally they are coming together. So uh, for this, we're just going to need a bit of CA adhesive. This ring has a lot of surface contact and the opal sits below the surface. So this should be more than enough to permanently fix this in place. Okay, here we are finished. What a fun and just interesting project that was. It's always a fun challenge to throw something new into the design process and see how that affects things. So what do you guys think? As an artist, AI is definitely a really touchy subject. I know that, but I think it's here to stay whether I like it or not. So it's interesting to experiment with things. I, you know, I don't think the tech is 100% there yet. It still has a lot of room for improvement, that's for sure. But it's certainly interesting and it's a tool that we just suddenly have access to. So again, definitely share some of your thoughts in the comments and let us know if there's any other AI inspired projects you'd like to see us try out. Now this ring won't be for sale on the website, but if you check down in the description, there is a link to our website where we've got all of our other designs on there. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to Everett and Tyler as well as everyone else involved in making this awesome video.